You feel your conversations are boring. You struggle with small talk. And even when you manage to have good small talk, you struggle to direct the conversation to a deeper level. As a single guy, you understand when talking to the girl you like, the first conversation has to be fun, otherwise you're f***ed. Today you're gonna learn how to have your conversations look more like this and less like this. So when she's talking to you, she feels excitement and we make sure you're not boring like the economics teacher from the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Anyone? Anyone? The Great Depression passed the... Anyone? Anyone? A tariff bill. So stay tuned, because the practical steps I'm going to give you, even the most introverted guy can implement. All right, so step one is your intention. Your intention colors your actions. Your first intention when going and talking to a girl isn't to pick her up. Your first intention is to go there and have fun. When you walk up to a girl with the intention to pick her up, you get stiff, you're fearful, and you're kind of like on a hidden agenda. And the woman picks up that energy. Whereas if you're just a guy who says, look, I'm going to go and I'm going to have fun with the people I talk to. And that's my deepest uh, number one priority. Then that's what the woman's going to feel from you. And when you're focused on having fun first, that is going to allow you to loosen up and just have a good time. Let me tell you a story I think a lot of you can relate to. So when me and my buddy JP used to go out to the clubs all the time, we had the intention of picking up girls and we'd try really hard. We'd approach tons of girls. We'd get rejected night after night, week after week until finally we'd, we'd be like fed up. Then one night we'd go out, but we were just so fed up of trying to get girls. We're like, man, fuck it. We're just going to have fun tonight. Fuck the women. All right. We're just going to have fun. We're going to chill. And lo and behold, on those specific nights where we weren't even trying, that's when we would get the girls. Now, why does this happen? This happens because your energy changes with your intention. When women feel that we were just there to have fun, guess what women want? They want to have fun too. And so when we talk to them, we weren't so careful. We, we didn't have an agenda. We were just kind of being natural, more authentic. We weren't trying to like manipulate the situation. And so we came across more like just cool, less needy and more natural. And so the women were attracted to us. Drop a comment below if this has happened to you. I'm sure it has. So like I teach in my book, priority number one is to have fun. Priority two is to get women. You never switch those priorities around. Priority number one always has to be to have fun. Step number two, don't act cool. The cool guy act is like, oh yeah, I'm alpha. Oh, I don't care. Oh, oh, boring. And there's no connection there. Okay. Because it's not authentic. You're better off using self deprecating humor, such as I'll walk up to a girl and I'll be like, you know what? To be honest, it took me like 15 minutes to gather the courage to come talk to you. You look absolutely amazing in that dress. So I'm kind of like making fun of myself using self-deprecating -depreca humor. I'm also being very honest and authentic. This disarms her. It shows her I'm not taking myself, her, or the situation too seriously. And it also is a playful way to show her that I'm coming in from a heart-centered place, not a head-centered place. I'm basically saying, hey, I got nothing to hide. I'm here to have a heart-to-heart, -heart, genuine connection with someone. And I'm also looking for a playful interaction. So I'm opening with something that's funny, self-deprecating to let you know this isn't going to be a boring, normal conversation. Now, there's a whole system on how to do self-deprecating humor in a way where you don't look weak. And it's described in my book, How to Seduce with Integrity. 500 pages, pure game, no fluff. But for now, I'll tell you this. When you stop acting cool like every other guy, you automatically differentiate yourself. Every other guy is like, oh yeah, hey, what's up? Oh no, I don't think you're that hot. Oh, I'm not that intimidated. And she sees through that act. She's seen it a thousand times. So you, what you're giving her when you're like, hey, you know what? You're so hot. I, what's my name again? Right. And you say that in a funny way that pattern interrupts her. If you guys know NLP, neuro linguistic programming, that's a pattern interrupt. One of the secrets in my seduction is I'm always pattern interrupting women. Why? Because pattern interrupt is making her brain go, what? Wait. It's making spikes go in her emotions. What? What did he say? Oh my God. I thought he was going to be like every other cool guy. And now he actually like admitted he was intimidated. Emotional spikes. 
Uh, mental spikes. So mental spikes, emotional spikes represent what? Excitement, emotional stimulation, aka fun. And this video is about how not to be boring. You want to know how to be boring? Be predictable. Talk like every other guy talks to her. So ironically, by not acting cool, you become the coolest motherfucker she's talked to tonight. Which brings us to step three. Don't be fake. The foundation of conversation is connection. Think back, when is the last time you felt a real good heart connection with a fake motherfucker? So then why do we as men think even being 1% fake with women is at all effective? The hallmark of a professional seducer is he's 100% real while talking to women. If any coach ever suggests that you be even 1% fake with women, that coach has exposed themselves as a fraud. Real game is showing up as your 100% fucking self and having women like you for you. And on another note, when you are 100% real while stepping up to gorgeous women, you love yourself more. And finally, real is the stimulation for conversation. When you say something really real, boom, that like boosts the conversation. You know why conversations die, people run out of things to say, and conversations are boring? It's, be it's because no one's saying what they really are thinking. Instead, we're saying what we think the other person wants to hear. Let me drop some game right here. If you do nothing else but stop saying what you think the other person wants to hear, and instead you just start dropping real shit, that alone will change your conversation game forever. Real is always interesting. Here's an example of how I'm really real with a drop dead gorgeous woman. So I'm talking to her. She has this blonde hair, these beautiful blue eyes. I'm just like mesmerized by her. I, I don't even know what she's saying, right? So while she's talking, she stops talking. I'll look at her and I'll be like, you know what? To be honest, I didn't hear anything you said for the past 30 seconds. Your eyes are just killing me okay now is that a line no that's exactly what i'm thinking in my head and so when i tell her that boom it amplifies the conversation saying something real is jet fuel for a conversation step number four is something i don't think anyone has brought up in this context the truth is the better you look physically and with your fashion and grooming the more friendly women are going to be with you and the easier they're going to make conversation for you. You know how sometimes you see girls just giddy around a guy and he's like really good looking? That's because that guy has spent years building an amazing physique and then putting really good clothes on top of that physique and then having his grooming 100%. And so he's showing up as the 10.0 version of himself, which on its own, makes women more playful and open to talk to him. So a giant mistake guys are making these days is they think game is enough. No, if you have game, but you're a slob, of course she's going to even make it harder for you when you talk to her and you think, oh, it's because I'm not confident enough. I'm not interesting enough. I need more stories. I need to be more fun. No, bro. You look like shit. You look average. You look like an average motherfucker. You want a 10. Why does the 10 want your average ass? Go fucking work out, work, work on yourself. Yes, it may take a year. It may take a year and a half, depending how much you fucked up. But bro, the harsh reality is women are friendlier and more open with uh, a guy who's got his fashion together and his body together. Again, any dating coach who's telling you you don't need to be in shape and you don't need to look good with your shirt off is fucking lying to you, bro. It's fucking lying to you. Go get in shape. Get your shit together. To get a 10, you need to be a 10. And when you look like a 10, women are a lot easier to talk to because they want to talk to you more. It's not how, it's who. Who. Women respond better to a better who, a higher version of yourself. Go get your shit together. Step number five, I also think you haven't heard this before. It's have an amazing life before you talk to her and having an amazing day before you talk to her. What do I mean? I mean, if you're in an amazing energy all day in your life because you're eating healthy, you're moving, you're working out, you're being disciplined, you're staying away from porn, alcohol, weed, drugs, anything that's, that's breaking you down, and you're just living a healthy lifestyle, you're a, a higher vibrational being. 
you are at a higher vibration and you're social and you're going after your dreams and you're kind of active in your life. So you have this momentum, this high vibration, this high energy, you're feeling good. You got this, you know, you're living life. And then you, st you, you see a hot girl and you step up to her and you're like, Hey, what's up? Well, she feels your whole life force behind you versus the guy that's like on his computer all the time and then he's, uh, he's, on his, he's on his on his phone and he's low vibration and then oh he's like well i wish i had a tissue now oh here's a tissue okay so here's like uh, uh, okay <laughs> i know uh, i know uh, watching porn uh, scrolling on social media compulsively uh, okay let's go to the club uh, oh let me go talk to that girl <laughs> and then you talk to her and she feels that you're just a fucking loser bro from your energy and you're like i'm gonna implement this thing this dating coach told me man your fucking energy fucked you before uh, it doesn't matter what you say you suck you fucking suck. Your energy sucks. You had a whole fucking low vibration, living a low fucking vibe life, bro. <laughs> okay, you get the picture, right? I want to deliver that message to you. I know a lot of you can relate to that. I'm not making fun of you. We've all had our down times where we got overweight. We got addicted to porn, to smoking, to drugs, to uh, alcohol, whatever. I'm not judging you, bro, but I'm, call I'm not calling you out. I'm calling you up. Because you and I both know you're better than this. And your energy all throughout the day isn't going to magically disappear when you go talk to that girl. So fix your shit. Fix your life. So when you step up, your energy's high. Step number six is randomly redirect conversations. Here's what I mean. One of the laws of conversation and seduction is never, ever talk about anything negative. It kills seduction faster than you, ever, than, than you would believe. So anytime she starts talking about something negative, redirect. Here's an example. So my buddy Stefan met up with these two girls he just met. He's a killer at day game. He met them somewhere. I don't know where. And he's like, bro, I'm at a sushi restaurant with two new girls I met. So I pull up. They're sitting in a booth. Uh, I sit next to Laura and she just moved to Vancouver from Toronto. So I turned to her, I'm like, okay, ask her the typical questions. Hey, how do you like it so far? What brought you here? Blah, blah, blah. So she was all positive and stuff until I asked her, okay, what brought you here? And then she said, oh, I'm working at this job. And I'm like, oh, do you like the job? And then immediately she's like, oh, no, no. And her energy dipped. She didn't like her job. She didn't like the boss, whatever. Now, a normal guy would be like, oh, okay, yeah, well, why don't you like it? Or he would like indulge that. I'm like, oh, negative, redirect. So when the second I, I saw that she dropped, and I'm talking about like, five, 10 seconds in, she's talking about her bosses. She doesn't really like him. So then I randomly redirect. I'm like, Hey, did you guys check out Kitsilano beach yet? It's like right down the hill here. And then we started talking about something positive Kitsilano beach. So one thing, one mistake guys make is they think they have to go along with whatever conversation the woman's talking about. No, absolutely not. You are the leader. She is the follower. You are the conductor and you conduct the conversation and the energy 20, like the whole time. And when it's going down, you bring it back up. She's talking about her shit boss. You talk about Kitsilano Beach and how cool it is and how all the cool people are there. So that's one way you can keep your conversations fun. Anytime a girl's getting down or you're getting down, sometimes we make that mistake too. We're like, oh, oh, manage the energy. Boom, switch topics. And it works every time. Now, guys have a fear like, oh, Jad, but won't that be random? Women always randomly go wherever you redirect them, all right? I'll be talking to a girl. She'll be talking like, okay, what did you do this uh, weekend? Oh, I was with my family, blah, blah, blah. And I can tell, I'm always anticipating. I'm like, I can tell that this conversation is about to get boring. So let me redirect it before it dips. So she's like, yeah, and I was with my family and blah, blah. And I can feel like she's kind of going like, ma, ma, ma. So then I'm, I need to insert something. So I'll be like, hey, if you could teleport yourself anywhere right now, where would you go? Boom. Instantly interesting, unpredictable, kind of weird, right? Weird question. Uh, and then we're back to the races. So don't just go with it. You need to proactively manage it every second and redirect it. And wherever you redirect it, they just go. And if you're extra scared of this, here's something you can do. If a girl's like, oh, well, that was kind of a random redirect. You just laugh and you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm totally random. So anyways, yeah, if you could be any animal, what would you be? And really, that's it. If you own it, then it's totally normal. Step number seven, stop being so goddamn well behaved.
I may have moved this step up. So if you went from step two to step seven, don't worry, we're covering the rest of the steps. Your objective is to not make a conversation boring. Do you know what's boring? Anything that's predictable. When you know what's coming, by definition, it becomes boring. When you are well behaved, the woman knows what's coming, therefore she is bored. Two things you can do to stop being so well behaved. Number one, compliment the woman. And number two, tease her. Oh, Jad, but what if she thinks that I'm uh, all into her if I compliment her? Oh, Jad, what if I tease her and then she gets offended? Oh. Bro, to be a seducer is to be a risk taker. There is no seduction without risk. And when you try not to be risky, that's even that's the most dangerous thing because then you don't get any pussy because without risk, there's no excitement. Risk and excitement are two sides of the same coin. You can't have one without the other. So shut your ass up and take some fucking risks. In my book, I give examples of how I'm very risky with girls and I say inappropriate shit and how they're so amused. I can see the amusement in their face of how amused I am with myself for taking the risk. So if you want to know more about that, check out the book Seduce with Integrity. It's available on Amazon. I can't help but insert a man-to-man, father-to-son conversation here. You need to stop needing women's approval. My mentor, Johnny Soporno, said, a boy becomes a man when he stops needing approval from women. You guys who are afraid to offend women or appear too sexual around women are still stuck in your boyhood stage where unconsciously you are still needing the validation from mommy and now women are acting as a symbol for your mother and you're looking for approval from them. You need to consciously switch something in your head and say, yo, I'm a man now. Fuck everyone's approval. I don't want my mom's approval. I don't want women's approval. I'm a man. I am the way I am. I have the beliefs I have. I have the values I have. I'll act the way I act. I'll say what I want to say. And you can either take it or leave it, love it or hate it. This is me. I want you to have a visual. How ridiculous and pathetic would it look for a full grown warrior, killer motherfucker to be kind of like tiptoeing around women like, oh, 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 can I compliment her? Oh, uh, oh, oh, can I tease her? What will that offend her? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh. Pathetic. Get fucking grounded. Stand your ground. You want to flirt with her? You fucking flirt with her. You want to tease her? You fucking tease her. You got to play your game, your style, the way you like, the way that's fun for you. And when you play a game that's fun for you, it automatically becomes fun for the woman because she's now amused because she's looking at someone who's being 100% real. You know what, what that demonstrates? All of you, I want to be, I want to be dominant with women. Oh, 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 I'm dominant. I'm cool. You want to be dominant, motherfucker? Show that woman you don't give a flying fuck what she thinks. And then you can make 10 mistakes and she'll still like you because she's going to be like, God damn, this guy's so confident. He doesn't give a fuck what I think about him. Damn. That's kind of making my pussy wet. Can you see how this is emotionally stimulating? You have Bob who's, hi, how are you? Oh, nice to meet you. Oh, uh, how many brothers and sisters do you have? Versus James who comes in and says, God damn, I'm sorry, but you look amazing. That Oh my God. Oh, oh damn. You look, oh shit. Who's she going to like more? Who's she going to want to talk to more? Who's she going to run to for fun? A uh, Bob. Oh yes. And uh, how are you this fine day today? Or James like, God damn. Damn, you look smoking in that dress. I'm sorry. I know it's inappropriate. I, I can't help. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, and all you guys who think, oh, well, I'll never compliment a woman because that gives her an ego boost, blah, blah, blah. You guys are fucking amateurs. The best seducers, the top of the top, that's all we do. We compliment the shit out of women, but we do it on an eye to eye level. We're not like, oh, oh, my God, you're an angel. That is fuck. No, no, fuck that. I'm telling her, God damn, girl, you look amazing. But it's the energy of like, yeah, and I know I'm amazing too. Let's be fucking amazing together. Make some fucking, let's have some, make love together. All right. So from an eye to eye level, I'm always complimenting women. Bro, I had this landlady that she, I rented a penthouse apartment. And this lady, she was like a professional. She's one of those women that just lives off of rich guys. So she would date CEOs. She had those silicon implants. You know, she had the lips fucking spent hours at the gym. She never had an ounce of fat on her fucking smoking hot. Right? So I see her once a month, see her once a month. She collects rent and uh, she even knows like I'm a dating coach and stuff. Right? We talk 
And so every time she shows up, she shows up in her drop top BMW, fucking looking like a million bucks. And I'm always like, God damn, you look good. Oh, shit. You've been going to the gym. Oh, wow. You look good. Right. Just telling her like, look good. It was never weird. It was never nothing. She loved me. I could tell like she was so comfortable with me because I, I wasn't filtering. I'm real. You see what I'm saying? Other guys are probably like pretending like, oh, well, I'm not going to mention anything about her her breasts or her lips or how good she looks because she knows it. She knows what you're thinking, bro. She fucking knows. And she's like, oh, okay, another guy putting on the cool guy act. Okay, this is boring, right? Versus Jack comes in and is like, oh, wow, God damn, you look really good. You see what I'm saying? Real is game. If you want to write anything down, write this down. Real is game. You want game? Be real. The more real you are, the more game you have. And when you're real, you can make so many mistakes. This is the thing I forgot I was going to tell you. In the book, The 48 Laws of Power, they say audacity can be corrected by more audacity audacity can be corrected by more audacity meaning if you're that bold real motherfucker you're stirring her fucking emotions even if you make mistakes she's forgiving you for those mistakes why because she's not looking for a perfect guy she's looking for a fun guy boom mic drop motherfucker mic drop motherfucker all of you guys are focused on, oh, let me be perfect. She's not looking for the perfect guy. She's looking for the fun guy. You know what it takes to be a fun guy? You got to take risks. You got to push things on to, towards the edge, sometimes over the edge. And you just got to be 100% real. What feels better than being 100% real you? Tell me, please, somebody in the comments, tell me. What feels better than being 100 motherfucking percent Take me or leave me real. Nothing. I'm feeling real right now and I'm vibing high just because I'm being myself. You do that with women, you got game. You got more women than you can shake a stick at. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to wrap this up because it went longer than I expected. But here's the summary I'm going to give you. Here's my parting advice to you, bro. Environment, environment matters. And this is something, again, I don't see talked about enough. Stay away from the clubs. Stay away from the cold approaching in the daytime. Those are very advanced, very difficult areas. Unless you're one of those super extroverted people who loves talking to people and it feels natural for you to cold approach in the daytime or go to the club and cold approach for you, then go do it. But if you're like me, an extreme extrovert, here's a better way to do it. Go join classes, groups, communities, meetups. If you're in a school, be part of your school, college, university what scene, whatever. Okay, uh, group co-ed sports events, more normal places. I'll tell you why. Number one, it's less pressure. Number two, it's less weird. It takes less skill. And number three is like, you're probably watching this because you're struggling. You have social anxiety. You, you, you have a fear of rejection. Uh, you feel awkward. You don't want to make anybody uncomfortable in public and you know, all that stuff, right? So that stuff's getting in your way and not even giving you the opportunity to even get into long enough conversations to learn anything. So what you need to do is focus more on environment. When you put yourself in an environment that is more in alignment with who you are, you're going to naturally come out of your shell and perform better. For example, for me, I'm an extreme introvert. My perfect environment to meet hot girls is while surfing. Okay, that's the perfect ideal for me. I'm surfing. There's a super hot surfer chick next to me. We're both waiting for waves. I start talking to her. We talk back and forth and on the beach, we talk, we have some drinks and things go from there. That's like my ideal, right? So I work backwards from that. Now, I don't live in a surf place. So I take the second best, right? Which is I'll do like co-ed volleyball, beach volleyball. Maybe I'll take some dance classes, acting classes. I'll find places where there are activities I enjoy and there are women there and I talk to them there. And because I'm more introverted, that works a lot better for me than hitting the loud clubs or doing a day game. Bro, I did day game and I, it felt disgusting to me, okay? I just did not fucking vibe with me. I'm not judging day game. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying it's wrong for the wrong people and right for the right people. For me, as an extreme introvert, day game, I, I did it, but I did not enjoy it. Night game, I did a lot of night game, actually, because I wanted to accelerate my learning. And um, I won't say that I hated it, but I will say you'll never see Jad in a nightclub. I mean, I'm... I hate those places now, 
right? Because I'm at 45, 44, sorry. At 44, I know who I am. And I go to the environments that are in alignment with me as an extreme introvert who likes more sporty things, outdoor things. And you're underestimating how much that alone is going to impact your ability to have playful and non-boring conversations with women. A lot of you, the problem you have is you're putting... You're trying to have, you're trying to game in the wrong environments. So environment fucking motherfucking really fucking matters. Choose the environment that is, uh, that puts you at your advantage and plays to your strengths. And the final step is some advice on taking action. Bro, you suck more than you think. All right. Like uh, when we watch these videos, we have, okay, I'm going to go out. I'm going to do this. going to be like, bah, 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 right. And then you go out and you, you suck. Okay. I'm not discouraging you, but it's it's better to just know this. All right. We always aren't we aren't as good as we think we are a lot of times. Uh, but there's also a flip side where I'm going to talk about in a sec where you're going to do better than you, you expect as well. But number one is if you're out of practice, understand that the first few times you're going to go socialize, you're going to suck. Mo- probably. All right. And be OK with that. And don't be like, oh, I went out a few times and I sucked. So this isn't meant for me. I'm doomed to die alone. Blah, blah, blah. No. You're going to suck for a little while and then you're going to get better, okay? But you're not going to get better staying home watching videos. Now, on the flip side, when you do go out and you're like, okay, fuck, I'm going to go talk to that girl and you imagine how badly you're going to fuck it up, you're actually going to go step up to her and you're going to do better than you expected as well, okay? So you're not as smooth as you think, but also you're not as terrible as you think. And so that's going to give you confidence. You're going to be like, Oh, I walked up to that girl and I didn't die. And oh, actually, I didn't do perfectly, but I didn't do like terrible either. Oh, okay, I I think I can do this, right? So you need to demonstrate to yourself that you can do this. Listen to the words. I didn't say you need to watch more videos to convince yourself you can do this. No, you need to demonstrate. I've jumped out of a plane over 200 times in 90 days when I had the dream of flying in a wingsuit. Before I made my first jump, I thought to myself, oh, I think I could do that. That's very different than now telling you I jumped out of a plane 200 times in under 90 days, motherfucker. What? I own that. I demonstrated that to my motherfucking self. So you got to go and demonstrate to yourself that you can step up to those beautiful women. That's a different level of confidence you ain't never going to get from no video. So the only way there is through, through the shit through the mistakes, through the rejection, through the embarrassment. Bro, I've been embarrassed and humiliated so many times, you wouldn't even believe it. So if you want to be a cool motherfucker, get embarrassed more. You're not cool if you never get embarrassed. You're a fucking loser. The cool motherfuckers are the ones with the scars, with the embarrassing stories. Go collect your scars. Go collect your embarrassing stories, and then you can crown yourself a fucking player. I know we left some things out, but the video got too long. If you would like me to make a second part to this video, drop a comment below. Tell me what you loved. Tell me what you hated. And watch this video next because it ties in very nicely with what we talked about here.